Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my director's spotlight on Shohei Imamura, a man who began his directing career in the late 1950s and continued through the early 2000s. So one interesting observation I made while going through my list is that I have multiple films in my top 10 that came out near the tail end of Imamura's career. That has not always been the case for my previous top 10s. So for example, uh, my list for Kihachi Okamoto and Masahiro Shinoda were heavily weighted towards the earlier or middle sections of their careers. That's not the case with Imamura because every one of his final four films, which were non-documentaries, have made my list. So he definitely finished his career on a strong note. And this is another one of those directors that's kind of essential if you're getting into classic Japanese films, you got to hit some, some Imamura films. So hopefully this list will uh, provide a guide for you. Let's do it. Now, uh, my thoughts on each film will be very brief, primarily because this is a list video, not a review. And remember, titles for all the movies I discuss will be listed in the description box below. I'm not providing availability information in this playlist because most of these films I saw years ago and availability has changed over time. My usual method for checking availability, though, is Google, so be sure to seek out any films that seem interesting to you. Number 10, Dr. Akagi, 1998. This is a drama comedy. At the end of World War II, a doctor treats the growing number of citizens affected by hepatitis. Now, this starts off rather slow, but becomes quirkier and more interesting as it progresses. Now, there are some nice ideas that metaphorically link the disease to Japanese culture as well. A very young Kumiko Aso gets some quality screen time, which is pretty interesting to see. This is a good film. Viewers looking for something different may want to check this one out. Number 9, Agent Aika, also known as Why Not, 1981. This is a drama comedy. So this film by Imamura takes place just before the Meiji Restoration, a turbulent time for the shogunate and has a number of characters and plot lines to it. But the main story involves a man who recently returned to Japan after spending years in America, only to find his wife working as a showgirl for a kind of peep show. There are some fun, crazy scenes to enjoy in this, but some viewers might be jarred by the shifts in tone, you know, from light and humorous to dramatic and tragic. But regardless, direction and acting here are solid. This is just definitely worth checking out. Number 8, Unagi, also known as The Eel, from 1997. This is a drama romance. A businessman kills his adulterous wife and is sent to prison. After his release, he opens a barber shop and meets new people while befriending an eel. The story eventually concerns itself with his assimilation back into society as well as his relationship with another woman. This is another interesting film that throws some odd characters into the mix. Koji Yakusho is the lead here, which is reason enough to give this one a shot. On a side note, if you have not eaten unagi in real life, you should, because it is delicious. Number 7, Profound Desires of the Gods, 1968. This is a drama. A Tokyo engineer arrives on a primitive island to drill a well to provide water for the sugar mill. He meets a family that is hated by the locals for breaking religious customs. Shohei Imamura focuses a lot on the villagers' superstitious worldview and the engineers' interactions with those villagers. Expert direction helps to keep you engaged throughout this massive three-hour runtime. But in the end, this succeeds as an interesting cultural study. Number 6, The Pornographers, 1966. This is a drama comedy. A small-time porno director and his dysfunctional family are explored in this. Most of the plot is concerned with the man going around trying to keep his operation afloat while avoiding Yakuza, cops, etc. The camera work is voyeuristic in its use of windows, doorways, and even fish tanks to peer into the lives of the protagonist, and the script is blackly humorous. There's very little sexual content, surprisingly, but you know, there are a few taboo themes that are introduced. This does get rather bizarre at times, but in a good way. Number 5, Pigs and Battleships, 1961, Drama. A small-time hustler decides to move into the Yakuza business against his girlfriend's wishes. 
There is an American influence here as a constant influx of sailors provide for much of the business in the town, most of which is prostitution. But Imamura focuses mainly on criticizing Japanese philosophy of life after World War II. The lead actress gives a very good performance in this, and the ending represents what is likely the most high energy and absurd series of events in this director's entire career. Number 4, Black Rain, 1989. This is a drama. So after surviving the atomic bomb, a girl and her family contend with radiation-induced illness and their positions as social outcasts in post-war Japan. So this film was shot in black and white and really feels like an old-school Japanese classic from the 1950s, despite the fact that it was made decades later. There are some sad images of the aftermath of the bomb, but most of the film concerns the plights of the survivors after they, that uh, grave event in history. Very high-quality stuff that is considered to be one of the best Japanese films of the 1980s. Number three, Vengeance is Mine, 1979. It's mostly a drama. The life of a murderous thief is explored in this film. So this is one of those slow-moving, engrossing films that emphasizes character interaction. The lead and his acquaintances are given healthy backgrounds and provide a realistic and subtle basis for his homicidal actions. This is a contrast to many other movies that may use blunt, cliched causes like uh, child abuse to, to justify these types of things. The lead actor does a good job, and there are some standout sequences. For example, the murders, the hot springs sequences, stuff like that. Viewers should know that there is a healthy amount of violence and sex in this film, but nothing gratuitous. This is very good stuff. Number two, Warm Water Under the Red Bridge, 2001, a comedy drama. This is a truly outrageous premise that results in a surprisingly entertaining movie. A man, played by Koji Akusho, meets a woman who suffers from a rare form of water retainage, which is only relieved through the immense eruptions of sexual ejaculations. So the mood is expectedly lighthearted in this one, especially when considering the environmental after effects of her waterfall-like explosions. Supporting characters offer some additional humor, and the love scenes are both sultry and amusing. Most fans of Imamura would likely not place this title this high on their own top 10 list, but I gotta be honest with you, I really enjoyed this one. <laughs> and my personal favorite Shohei Imamura film is Intentions of Murder, 1964, a drama. So he directs this film about a housewife who endures both the unpleasant company of her husband as well as the repetitive sexual assaults of a disturbed burglar. So a number of themes are explored, including the stigma attached to being a rape victim, and there are a few really cool scenes involving trains, cars, and even a dress shirt. The running time does feel maybe just a tad too long at 150 minutes, but this is an incredibly impressive film with fine acting across the board. But Eric, you may ask, where the heck is Ballad of Narayama on your top 10? And in responding to that question, I gotta be honest, really did not care for that film much. I just did not. In fact, I actually greatly prefer the Keizuke Kinoshita version from 1958. So if you haven't seen that one, check that one out. However, you know, if you're exploring Imamura's filmography, you basically have to watch Ballad of Narayama because it's, it's usually ranked very highly on, on many people's top tens. But this is my top ten, so I'm, I'm doing it my way. So those are my personal favorite Shohei Imamura films. I hope that this list can provide some recommendations for those who are unfamiliar with this director. And if you've seen some of his films already, you know, tell me your favorites in the description box below. And as always, I'll see you next time.